Good morning. morning. I'd like to welcome those watching remotely with us, uh, worshiping from uh, various locations. Glad that you are with us this morning. Let's start with our memory verse from our family devotionals. This is a short one, but a great one. Psalm 119, 11. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And today we're going to talk about a sin that oftentimes we don't think about. So I dare say this will be, this will be one that if you think of sins to avoid, this one probably would not make our top 20 list. And yet God ranks it very, very high. Um, the lesson is about serving others. I don't know if you noticed, but we have a banner over here. This banner is different than the one you've been ignoring for the past several Sundays, this one. We change these quarterly. This is our last quarter of the year. Our theme is about focusing our families, and we've been doing that on four different things. We started out the Word of God, the Bible, focused our families on the church. This is our congregation, our church family, uh, on relationships, and then now this final quarter we will focus our families on serving others. And there are, there's a lot of serving others that's going to take place today at our picnic. If you didn't know, we're having a picnic, picnic today after services uh, at Case Community Park. And I also want to mention, if you were not here last week, the elders uh, at the end brought up uh, Darren Harris as one that they would like to put before you as an, a, a, our next elder, as an additional elder, bringing our eldership to four. And so uh, if you're not aware of that, uh, that happened last week, and the elders asked that you take two weeks, so now you have one week, if you didn't know. Uh, if you feel like that there's uh, something that would make Darren unqualified to be a shepherd here, that you would come to the elders about that. And if you submit that in, in writing, uh, be sure and put your name with that so the elders can follow up with you. But um, I think it's a beautiful thing. I've seen this through uh, many years here, different men to be chosen and put before the congregation, and I've never seen one who was really, really, really eager to be an elder, and honestly, that's probably a bad sign if that, if that does happen, and typically, um, those that are, that are put before you to be one of your shepherds. They carry that idea and that responsibility incredibly heavy, as it is, as it is. And so uh, it's an honor, but really more than an honor, it is a commitment to serving. Our shepherds serve us. And so, uh, but be praying about this because uh, uh, next, the plan would be, if no objections, uh, that are, that would deem this um, uh, unfit, then next Sunday, Darren would be installed as our fourth shepherd here. So uh, be praying about that. I want to uh, begin, and I want to brag on many of you who are serving today. If you have a responsibility at the picnic, or maybe you've already uh, fulfilled your responsibility leading up to the picnic, thank you, because this takes a lot of us to be able to pull off a, a nice event like this today. And so a number of you will be at the picnic today, and you will have a job to do, and you'll be serving, and thank you for that. Um, all right, so this is an illustration. Many of you know on the back of these bulletins we have at the, at the bottom on the back is an outline. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so, and uh, interesting, so I was going to... Uh, Take, I'm going to take these first. Man, you guys are almost too amazing this morning. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to give this young man a bulletin because these, these already have one. And this is my, I'll come back to this later. But my illustration is just, I want to supply you with a bulletin and a pen. And I think you know, I think you know the rest. Okay. And so we'll come, we'll, come, we'll come back to that later. We'll come back to it. Um, but today's lesson is about service, and it starts out, we start out in Matthew 25. It starts out with something 
um, that I just illustrated. A, you have one man giving others something. And verse 14 says, It will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one. To each according to his ability, then he went away. And talents in the first century, uh, talents, they were an amount of money. And so this master, he entrusts his property, money, to these servants. Three different servants, three different amounts. And he leaves. He goes for a long time. And then he finally comes back. And when he comes back, the man that was given five talents, he comes forward and he says, Master, I've, I've, I've taken the talents that you've given me and I've made five more. And we'll see that um, in verse, um, verse 20, we read about this man taking these talents. But if you look at verse 16, this is what I want you to see. The one who received five talents went at once and traded with them. He made five talents more. Of course, the one with two talents, he did the same thing. He made two more. The one with one talent, he hid his master's money. So he didn't make any money on it. But the first thing I want us to see and not miss is that the the one who was given five, when did he go and, and invest those talents? He went at once. As soon as he was given, he was given his master's money and told what to do, he went straight about it. And the one with two, he went and made two more. And the one with one, he hid his talent. So when the master comes back, the one with five said, here, I've made five more. And look at what his master said to him. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And this statement, when you hear the words, well done, when you hear quoted from the Bible, well done, good and faithful servant, what time, what event do you think of? We think of Judgment Day. Well done, good and faithful servant. And the fact is, in this chapter... Jesus will illustrate two things, but they're both about Judgment Day. They're really about the day that's coming, Judgment Day, what's it going to be like? And the fact is, people going into heaven are going to be told, well done, good and faithful servant. Okay? And so that's what this man is told who made five more. The one with two, same thing. He brought two more. He was told, well done, good and faithful servant. Then the one with one talent, verse 24. He also, who had received the one talent, came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. So the phrase, you have what is yours, this was a phrase that was used in Jewish transactions to say, I am no longer responsible for this any further. We recently, as Bob announced last week, we recently, uh, this congregation acquired a, a new bus. It's a van, a transit van, um, for oftentimes for our young people, but, but uh, other times for any of this congregation. And so we have this new van. When we, uh, Matt and I went up to Missouri and uh, acquired the van, and when we got it, they had one key. And it had a key fob where you could remotely, you know, lock or unlock, those kind of things, which did not work. But the key worked, and there was one of them. Okay, so we drive that home. So we've had that about a week, and uh, I have to brag on Susan Bowen. She came... To, and I'm, I'm sorry, people don't like to be bragged on. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. How refreshing. Uh, she's serving in the nursery, but she raised her arms like this. And so uh, Susan asked us, somehow she found out we only had one key, and she asked us, would we like her to go and make keys for us? And we said, absolutely. And then she did not know what she signed on for because you have to go to a dealership, which she did. 
It took forever, half a day, which she did not know. Um, but she came away with two keys that work and both the key fobs work. Okay. So, but while we, there was about a week when we only had one key. And so I would need to get in uh, the bus or, or take it or use it for something. And so Matt had the key and I told him, I said, Matt, do not lose this key. I mean, we have one key, do not lose this key. And so when I would borrow it, I would take it. When I would bring it back, I would have Yvette present and say, all right, Matt, I'm giving this to you. I no longer, right? I no longer am responsible for this. Let the record show you are responsible. I'm not. Does that make sense? That's kind of what this man does with one talent. He says, I was afraid of you, master. I was afraid, but so I just hit it. I didn't make more like you told me to. That was the job, by the way. Take the talent, go make money with it. You guys realize if you have a fair amount of money, you can make money? Do you know that? If you don't, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to make a lot if you don't have some. I mean, it can be done, but the more you acquire, once you get to a point where uh, if a person gets to where they have excess money, now you can really make money if you wish. Interest, if nothing else. But these two... These two, the one who had five and the one who had two, they doubled them. They didn't make it on interest at the bank. You ever heard of a CD? There are investments that are secure. They don't make as much interest, but they will make money. And there are other ways to make money that are more risky, but you can make more. And that's what these two did. They doubled it. The one with five, he doubled it. That's a pretty good return if you don't know, any, you don't know much about Investing money. That's a really good return. That's 100%. The one who hit it, his master will tell him he should have invested it, at least in the bank, someplace that's safe. But this part here illustrates for us, sometimes we don't serve God or others because we don't think we're capable. We're afraid we're not capable enough. I can't teach children's Bible hour. I, I'm not capable enough. I can't teach a kid's class. I'm not capable enough. I can't do this or that or the other because surely someone else is more talented. And so we're afraid. Sometimes we're afraid to do or say the wrong thing. And so we hold back and don't serve. And in that sense, we don't do or say the wrong thing, but we don't do anything. And that's the fault of this, this third servant. He doesn't do anything with his master's money. Sometimes we don't serve because we're too busy. And I want to remind you that the American life, I would argue, is the busiest life. And don't you know Satan is using that? Satan uses what he has against us. And in America, he uses busyness because it doesn't look sinful but if it ties our time up so much we can't serve God, can you see the sneakiness of what Satan does? So sometimes we're just too busy. And sometimes, frankly, we don't care enough. We don't serve because we don't care enough. We don't care enough about others. We don't care enough about what God's trying to do or what God needs from us. Look at what the Master says to him. You wicked... And slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I scattered no seed. So let's pause there. Okay, you thought I was a hard man. And the way Jesus tells this, the master doesn't deny that. You knew I was a hard man. You knew I expected you to do what I asked you to do. So in your fear, why didn't you work at it? Why didn't you at least go to the bank? You wouldn't have lost my money. You would have made a small amount, but at least you would have made some. You ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what, I, what was my own with interest. You could say that the master diversified his investments, by the way. Three different servants, right? Three different abilities, 
5, 2, and 1. He gave them according to their ability. But this one, he buried it. But it's, I think it's important that we understand the master calls him wicked and slothful. God is saying you should have done something productive. Something. And God considered it wicked and slothful. So back to where I said if we were to list top 20 sins in our eyes, would we have listed doing nothing? Sins to avoid. Would doing nothing have made our top 20? But God says, God calls it wicked and slothful. And look at what God says here, verse 30. Cast the worthless servant. Is that too harsh, by the way? Worthless? I mean, God said it. So the cheat code, the cheat answer is always no. You know, it, did God say something wrong here? Your answer is always no. You know that, right? But God calls him a worthless servant. Is that too harsh? He gave the servant responsibility. The servant did nothing. So cast the worthless servant into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And this description describes hell, doesn't it? Describes hell. It's not part of the story where he would just fire the servant. But it describes hell. Then Jesus goes on to tell more about Judgment Day. And this part maybe we do think more of about Judgment Day because he says in verse 31, The Son of Man will come in His glory, the angels with Him, and He will separate all the nations, all the people. He will separate the sheep from the goats. The sheep will be the saved. The goats will be the lost. The sheep will be on God's right hand at Judgment Day. You want to be over here. You can be anywhere in here. But on Judgment Day, you're going to want to be on this side. That's the side you want. That's the side you hope God puts you on. In all seriousness. God may, God, this is how God describes it's going to be. The saved will be on one side. It will be on God's right hand. The lost will be here. You and I won't have a choice which line to get in. We will be placed in a line. And then to those on God's right, He will tell them, He'll, he'll explain this, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. It, isn't that interesting that on Judgment Day when God says, you know, enter into heaven, well done, good and faithful servant, because you did what? You served people. You helped people. When people needed help, you did something. You found ways to serve. You found ways to be a good neighbor. You found ways to... Bless people. Help people. And I, I underlined the words you. I included the word you. Because part of what's important here is notice Scripture doesn't say you sent someone to give me food. You sent someone to give me a drink. You were a part of a church that had ministers who were sent to do this. You were a part of a church who had deacons that fed me when I was hungry. You were a part of a church that had shepherds who went and visited me when I was sick. The model of a church where members come and, and give money and sit through a service and staff serves and deacons serve and elders serve, that model is not God's model. And it's hard for your preacher to tell you that. Because it feels like I'm telling you, it, 
I fear someone thinking Elliot doesn't want to work, so Elliot's telling us we have to work, and yet I'm just relaying the message from God who says, by the way, the word minister comes from a word, which a Greek word, which means servant. The word deacon, even more literally, comes from a Greek word that means servant. And elder, also called in Scripture shepherds, shepherds serve sheep. They do oversee and they do have authority, but they also serve lovingly. But you're a servant too. And on Judgment Day, if you're in the correct line, you'll be there because you served. Partly because you served. Because you helped. You used what talents God gave you. And some serve more. Hey, some are given five. And honestly, if you, it, it's good that we are humble people. But I think many, many of us, if we're honest with ourselves, we also see that God's given us plenty of talents, plenty of ability, plenty of whether it's your mind or your energy or your heart, right? Your knowledge, your skills, whatever it is. If you feel like God has given you enough that you can do things, that's a responsibility. So sometimes people become arrogant because of how good they are at something. And yet the Christian, the better we are, the more talents God has handed you and says, go work, go work. So it's a little humbling and it is a responsibility. It's a weight. I, I described to begin with the weight that, that Darren feels right now. Well, each of us should also feel a weight, a, a, a burden of responsibility that God has said, okay, I've given you this, now I need you. I need you to serve. And so, on, on, reading on in this chapter, Jesus does the opposite to those that he tells, Depart, um, you cursed into the eternal fire, fire prepared for the devil and his angels. That's verse 41. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. On and on. So the fact is, we... As members of this congregation, we need to become an army of servants. And your church leaders need to become better at equipping you. Elliot has to get better at asking people to do things in the name of God. I have to get better at coming to you and say, can you help with this? And your shepherds have to get better at that. And your deacons, as easy it is as it is, it's relatively easy to just do it yourself. Anyone relate to that? Raise your hand if you think, man, I'd just rather just do it myself. Thank you. Thank you. Sometimes it is somewhat easier, but it's not better. And I've been doing what I'm doing as a career for a while now, and I've got to get better at this. I, I, because I'm decent at doing, but I am not good at delegating and empowering and equipping you. But that's what God has given me. My responsibility is to equip you. And the elder's responsibility is to equip you. And deacon's responsibility is to ask some of you to come along and help them as they serve to equip you. And can you imagine what we can do with instead of eight elders, ministers, and deacons total... If we have how many adults? A hundred? 150? 200? What can we do with that number? That's what God's trying to do. And so in 1 Peter 4, 7, it says, The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. Now, those kind of things we talk about periodically, right? Be sober, you know, be self-controlled, avoid sins that we think about a lot. Uh, love one another, we talk about that. Verse 10 says, as each has received a gift. Now we're getting into the story of the talents, the parable of the talents. Each one of us has received things from God that make you unique 
uniquely capable to do something, to help, to encourage someone, to serve someone to, in a variety of ways. So each one has received a gift. Use it to serve one another as good stewards. The word steward is mentioned. That's when you're given a responsibility. Notice the, in verse 14 of Matthew 25 where we've been, where Jesus says, when that, story, when that story started out, he says a man went on a journey, he called his servants, and he did something. He blank property to them. You remember what word was used there? 2514. It's an open book quiz. A man, he was going on a journey, he called his servants, and he blank property to them. Thank you. Yeah, I know. You're not supposed to speak out in here. I know. It's nerve-wracking. Entrusted. Entrusted. Has the word trust in it. And part of what I want us to wrestle with today is, can God trust me? Can God trust you? God has given you something. Can he trust you with it to do what you're supposed to do with it? Serve others. Can he trust you? So stewards of God's various grace, whoever speaks as the one who speaks oracles of God, whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. Now, so Peter has divided all ways of serving into two categories. Two categories. Either you use your words or your actions. But whatever you do in order that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. I want to brag on uh, three different people this morning in the ways that they serve. The first one's Mike Plummer. And I apologize to all three of these because no one likes it when the preacher calls them out in front of everybody, even when it's good. Um, and so I'm sorry. But Mike came to me a number of years ago. He said, hey, do you need help setting up tables and chairs You know, for Monday night for the master? That's part of what has to happen over there for us to have that event. Do you need help? Setting up tables and chairs. I said, absolutely. Absolutely I do. He said, I'll take care of that. I said, thank you. And Mike, every time we have Monday night for the master, he sets up tables and chairs. Um, sometimes he will draft some help in doing that. And I'm looking at a couple of them right here. Rick and Brock, I know each of them have been drafted at times. There may be others that have been drafted, I don't know. But one thing I want to say is, if you ever get drafted to serve in God's name, thank God that you got to do something with what God gave you to honor His name. If we ever get asked to do something, and, you, and now sometimes you can't do it. You're busy, you already have prior commitments, you're, you know what I mean? I'm not talking about those things. I'm not talking about you're sick or you're not physically able. I don't mean any of that. I mean, when we can help and we're asked to help and we do, praise God for it. Praise God. That's why God made us. It's why he made us, to serve. And I'm grateful to Mike for the ways that, and I would venture to say most of y'all had no idea who sets up for Monday Night for the Master. But Mike does. And he could use some help. He could use some help. If you don't know who he is, come, come find me. I will, I will show you. I'll get you his number. He could use some help. And that's part of what we want to do here is get more people involved doing more. Right? More involved doing more. Second person I want to brag on, Reese Bennett. Reese um, is an amazing young man. I call him young man because he's younger than me. Uh, Reese works at Lowe's. And I promise you, they love him as an employee. Because what I know is true about Reese is if I need something that he can do, and I ask him, he will say yes, and he'll usually turn his back to me and then go start doing it. I mean, he, you tell Reese, you ask him to do something, he'll go do it. He doesn't say, um, now, what, why are we, let me, why are, why are you, why are we doing that? He won't ask a question. He won't, he won't crack a joke. He won't, uh, he won't get distracted. He won't forget. 
And it doesn't matter what I ask him to do. I could ask him, Reese, will you come up this afternoon and sweep all these sidewalks out here? Now, you would say, you mean during the picnic? <laughs> Reese won't even ask that. He'll say, all right. And he'll just do it. I wish we could clone him. I wish we had a hundred Reese Bennett's. The third person is Bridget Sam. Um, Bridget is one of the most wonderful people I know, one of my absolute favorite people. Um, she suffers from spina bifida, and uh, she's not the only one, but that is a, a disease that uh, causes her to be to use a wheelchair. And so, uh, but I've I've never met someone who had reasons to be grumpy who is so cheerful and positive and encouraging. And I want to show you something she does on Facebook. Um, this would be 10 years, Bridget. It's 2024. In 2014, she started uh, reading a daily devote. She'd read a little bit of scripture each day and summarize that scripture in just maybe two or three words, maybe four or five words, and put that on Facebook. She just make a post. She put book, chapter, verse, the passage, and then and then the summary. Just really brief summary of what that is. Okay, I'll give you an example. This was yesterday. Matthew eleven twenty eight through thirty. Be humble and have a gentle heart. She did that in two thousand. 14. She did that a few days in a row, and somebody told her, you know, you're not going to be able to keep this up. I mean, you're eventually not going to be, I mean, goodness, every day. And she has done that every day for the past 10 years. Every day. And sometimes I get on Facebook, uh, I just want to look quickly I want, I want to just scan quickly some things on Facebook. I'm not, I'm not there to you know what I mean? I'm not there to leave messages. I'm not even there. Sometimes I, I'm just a little bored. Maybe I'm in a checkout line. It doesn't take much to bore Elliot. And, uh, and I might just, like, I'm just looking. Uh, I'm not going to like anything. I don't care how cute the puppy or the baby or whatever it is, how adorable it is. I'm just going to scroll. I even tell myself that, Elliot, just don't, just scroll. When I see Bridget's, I have to like it. I have to like it, partly because of what it is, partly because of who she is and what. There are things she cannot do, but she does what she can do, and, she, and she's doing with what God gave her, and she's serving, and I can't pass it up without, without supporting it because it's that good. And not very many people will like it. Okay? And she needs more support on that. She will probably approve you as a friend if you'll request it. All right? Her name is Bridget Sam. One G, no D, two T's. Do you see how beautiful it is when we do something in God's name? And, and I'm going to preach on this next week as well. This week, this week was the hammer, all right? Ne next week's the pat on the back. But even with the hammer today, I want to remind you, God tells us to serve because all, it is also good for us. You get amazing joy when you serve, when you do something in God's name for someone else. So on Judgment Day, what do we want to hear? And the question I want you to wrestle with today is, am I a faithful servant or a slothful servant? Because that's how God divided it. And on Judgment Day, he'll divide us into two lines. We'll be in, we'll, we will either be in the faithful servant line or we will be in the slothful servant line. One of the two. I didn't mean to pick on one person today. I thought, thank you. I thought... I figured a few of you would not have one of these even with you, much less do it. Well, thank you. Thank you. So I didn't tell Caleb what to do, 
But he understood what I was saying, right? It kind of went without saying. They did? Well, at least someone did. But some you could just color on this. You could doodle on this. And I'm not going to ask anyone what you did with the outline today, all right? It, this, God never said, thou shalt do an outline when your preacher preaches. But as an illustration, God is going to come one day when we stand before him in judgment And God's going to say, hand me your bulletin. And your bulletin is your life. Your life. God gave it to you. He's going to say, let me see what you did with it. And some people would say, you know, what do people do with their lives? Well, God, I made a good career of my life. I I went on a lot of great vacations. I did a lot of fun things. I mean, I loved life. Thank you, God, because I had so much fun. Thank you. And God is not asking us how much fun we had. He's saying, what return did you get on what I gave you? Your gifts to serve others. What did you do in my name? And that's where we, we battle every day. You know, we had a missionary come Wednesday night, and we have the silver box out today as well. It came one of the professors from the School of Biblical Studies in Joss. They train preachers to go out back to where they're from in Africa and preach and set up congregations. And uh, they need support in Africa. They need support. Our money goes so far over there. They need help from us. Um, They face danger, danger of life. Sometimes Christians are killed over there just for being Christian. And they face all kinds of obstacles They face hunger problems, water problems. Do you know what we face? We face amusement problems. We're amused by the world we get to live in. And we're so busy, and God's going to come back and say, what did you do with it? And so pray about how you can serve better. We're going to sing a song, Make Me a Servant. Pray about what you can do more for God's people How can you use what God gave you? And it may be like one of our sisters, um, Jeannie Couch, who is basically homebound, but she writes cards and she prays. She's a prayer warrior. Everybody can do something, can't we? So we're going to sing this song. If you have a need, we would want you to come and let us help you with that. You can respond by coming forward. We will have shepherds at the doors with their wives, and you can have a more private prayer that way if you wish. But if you have a need, please come while we stand and sing.